Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. Some of the viewers have been asking me, where are the war graves in Brooklyn Cemetery? Are they in one specific place? And where can we find them? Well, today I'm meeting a local historian called George Cogswell to try and answer some of your questions. Also, Bernie, formerly of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, will also help on this task. As we approach Armist Day, it's only right that we remember them. Good. Hi, I'm Bernie, um, formerly of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission and uh, now retired. Just helping out here today to get information on these graves. This is Jack Graham, a gunner. He was one of the first ones to be buried in Sale Cemetery. There is two sections. There's this section here, section A, and across the road in section B. Jack Graham is the only one buried on this side of the cemetery. All the rest, there's 77 altogether, the rest are buried on the other side of the cemetery, which we will be going round now to have a look and give you some information on those. This was a private memorial, you see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This was a private memorial, and this is why yes. it's here on it on its own and not yeah. with the rest of his comrades. The, you can see the curb stones round here. That is something the commission don't put down because it was a private memorial. Their family would have put those curb stones there with the um, commemorations um, engraved on, onto it. Uh, the commission aren't allowed to take those away. Hi George, thank you for coming um, to Brooklyn Cemetery today. Tell us what you know about um, individual stories or anything you can tell us that's interesting about Brooklyn Cemetery. Um, Brooklyn Cemetery, yes, in terms of the war graves, uh, coincidentally there's 46 First World War buried here and there's 46 Second World War buried here. They're not all commemorated by the Commonwealth War Graves uh, because uh, so, although they died within the parameters of the war graves, they were uh, discharged from the army as being unfit for future service. Um, and then they were put, obviously take, taken off the army payroll and put onto the social services payroll. And um, they uh, are not commemorated by the Commonwealth War Graves simply because Commonwealth War Graves were not informed uh, about these particular men. There are uh, one, one of them in particular died in, in um, RAF Altrincham. Uh, he he uh, were blown up in, 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 in they were moving ammunition that was being recycled, and the uh, ammunition blew up and killed him. Now he's not mentioned or not commemorated by the Commonwealth War Graves. So although there's 46 uh, in each side, they're not all commemorated. Hi Bernie, um, we're now on the Brooklyn side of the cemetery, okay. uh, where most of the graves, graves are. Um, why, why would you think the graves are so scattered and not all in one place? Uh, well the word, it, word in itself scatters, we're on the commission we, we class them as scattered graves. Um, there's probably no area big enough here to make a, a full monument, uh, a plot so to speak. So they, they are classed as scattered graves. Um, a lot of them would have been, First World War could have been private memorials which now have commission headstones because the um, it was the Imperial War Graves Commission which started in 1917 by Fabian Ware. Um, it later became the um, Commonwealth War Graves Commission in 1967. Uh, we have a, a lot of people don't know this, that I mean the, bit, the country that's got the most war graves is France. After that, you can ask many people, they may say Belgium, Germany. It's not. The next country has got the most war graves is the UK. There's 13,000 burial grounds in the UK alone. Uh, worldwide, the Commission have, have burials and, um, in 152 countries of the world. Um, including America. Okay, we've got here T. H. Dudley, um, died in 1920 at the age of um, 23. Now, yeah, the war had finished then um, in 1918, but the commission carried on burying people 
who'd fought in the war, who later died of their injuries. And the commission buried people until 1921 from the uh, First World War, and again, because they died of, of their in injuries. Uh, the, em the, the emblem here, the badge, is the Lancashire, the Lancashire the Fusiliers. Uh, well, this is the grave of uh, the Goodliffe uh, family. Uh, Paul, Mary uh, Anne Goodliffe lost three sons uh, during the First World War. Uh, she lost James, he died on 29th of February 1916, aged 20. Uh, Charles Henry Goodliffe, uh, 31st of July 1917, aged 29. And John Thomas Goodliffe, 15th of November 1918, aged 21. They are all commemorated by the Commonwealth War Graves, um, but only uh, John Thomas Goodliffe is actually buried in this grave. The others are buried uh, overseas. James was an apprentice at Westinghouse Works, Trafford Park. Um, Charles, Charles Henry was employed at Mather and Platt, Parks Works, Newton Heath. Um, John Thomas uh, was a, uh, was employed as a gardener. So Bernie, how many um, years have you been and you work with the uh, Commonwealth War Graves Commission? Um, around about 18 years. Um, I retired in 19, 19, 2019. Um, I've worked in various countries. I've been based in uh, the Netherlands. Germany, uh, Norway, Iceland, Oslo. Um, I was only going out there to do specific jobs and then come back. Um, I started originally in the UK, then I went to the Netherlands, then to um, France, and eventually back to the UK, uh, where I was based down in Brooklyn, in Surrey. Yeah, as you can see, the yard dotted around here. Um, we've got these two here. Um, died 22nd of uh, December 1942 to J.F. McGregor and then D.A. Wright 9th of June 1943 so because you know, there were probably six months be between them they were buried here there was room we can look over to the other sections over there you'll see three commission headstones there um, there will be some over there as you can see two there uh, they're scattered all over the cemetery. Um, you can find where each one is if you go on the um, Brooklyn Cemetery website. You can look them up, or you can look them up on the Commission uh, website to find out where casualties are in the cemetery. That, but you'll get a cemetery plan from the Commission's website where it will point out where the graves are, so you can you can visit them. As mentioned by George and Bernie, all these graves are scattered around both sides of the cemetery, more towards the Brooklyn side. So here's one here, George A. Westbrook, 21 years of age. And Private H. Jones of the King's Shropshire Regiment. and J.T. Jepson, the Royal Army Service Corps. And two more just over here. J.G. Ellison, the Lancashire Fusiliers, age 40, which is quite old in this campaign. And E. Armstrong, Royal Army Ordnance Corps, 19th of December 1920. So they're normally put here after the war, who've more likely died of their injuries. There are so many different graves, I can't visit every single one of them. But Bernie said 
is going to come back and we're going to look at doing some individual stories on some of these ex-servicemen and as mentioned if you've got any ex-military that uh, you'd like to find the history about or where they're buried please contact me uh, leave a message or a description at the bottom of uh, this link and uh, I'll get Bernie to uh, have a look and research and see if we can put tie, tie up any loose ends and make sure you get the information that you need. Thanks Bernie for um, taking the time out on this uh, lovely sunny day, Manchester rain. Um, where would we, anywhere else in Manchester we didn't have rain. Um, I want to do a little bit more on the individual graves but we can also say that rain stopped play at this moment in time. Um, so what's, what's, what's your plans going forward for the uh, Commonwealth War Graves Commission? What, what are you still going to continue to do? Um, I still like to get involved with the War Graves whenever I can. Um, people often ask me privately, oh, my father or grandfather, could you find out what happened to him? And I go on the Commission website, which is quite easy to do, and I look them up for them. Um, one instance, um, in our local pub, The Brook, there's a chap in there, Ian, and he said his father was killed when he was six in the Second World War. Mm. We were in the pub when he asked me this and I said, what was his name? Five minutes later, I told him where his father's grave was. Even a picture of it, he was living ten miles away from his father's grave and he looked for him for all his life to find out where his grave was. Wow. And when I told him where it was, he was in tears, as I was myself. Wow, that's, that's amazing. But for any of our viewers out there, if, if anyone wants to contact you, would you, would you be able to uh, help them um, try and find relatives? It would be a pleasure. Right, you have it, have it yourself. So if you um, might make a comment at the bottom of the, of the uh, link, um, put your details in there. I'll pass them on to, to Bernie and see if we can find some of your lost relatives. As he says, it'd be a pleasure. By the way, thank you for watching. Thank you, it's been great. Thank you.